Welcome to the Research Like a Pro with DNA question and answer series. And our question for today is, should I use the weighted or unweighted segment in Ancestry DNA? And this question came about when someone was filling out their Airtable base. And the question is, on my Airtable base, I've been placing the center Morgan shared and the longest segment, but now I see on Ancestry, there are two categories, shared DNA and unweighted shared DNA. Under center Morgan shared, which number do I use? Well, this is a great question. So thank you for writing in about that one. So here you see my Airtable base and I have the DNA match details page open. And over here, we have got the function field, the formula field for match details, which is filled in by the tester, the DNA match and the number of center Morgan shared. So that's automatically filled once I put in all of this information. And you can see that this is sorted by the number of centimorgans from highest to lowest because that's orange, that matches the orange here, and it's grouped by the tester, and the purple shows what it's grouped by, and so I have multiple test takers in this Airtable base, and so I'm grouping it just by my matches. And so here is the question that we're wondering about. What number do we put here for the number of shared centimorgans when we're working with Ancestry? Because Ancestry gives us those two different numbers sometimes. And we have got the longest segment here or the longest segment here and the number of segments in the company. And so this is the first part of the DNA match details that we fill out when we're adding a match. So let's take a look at one of my matches. Here is me and JB. And Ancestry says that we share 1% DNA, 75 centimorgans across three segments. So if I want to get more information about this match and a little bit more about those segments, including how big is the largest segment, I just click on that. And then that opens up this field here. And it tells me about um, the shared DNA, the unweighted shared DNA, and the longest segment. And then I have to click on how do we estimate DNA relationships to get this field to open up. And so if you have been wondering what this means, you click on this and then you'll get Ancestry's explanation here. So you can always use this for easy reference to remember the concepts of weighted versus unweighted, but we're going to break it down a little bit more. Now, one thing that you need to keep in mind is you will see no difference between shared and the unweighted amount of DNA if it's over 90 centimorgans, your match. There will be no difference, and you can go check that out in your match list. But anything under 90 will have a difference. It could be slight, as in this case, or it could be more significant. So let's just take a look at some of the details that go into these two different numbers. So from Ancestry's white paper, and you can go and read their science, scientific white paper, um, it talks about how timber is the algorithm that Ancestry DNA developed to determine matches that are most genealogical relevant, six to 10 generations. These are the matches we are working with and that we are using to figure out our common ancestry and to confirm lines on our family tree. So I put a star here because this is a key point to remember that this is the whole purpose of timber. Now, they know that pieces of DNA could be identical between two people because they inherited population segments from a very distant ancestor. And these very distant ancestors will never be able to figure out. So we don't want to work with these segments. We, we want those taken out. So to find DNA matches for recent ancestors, Ancestry DNA uses the timber algorithm to filter the matches. Now, if you go to the white paper, you will see this little chart here. And this was based on DNA results of 300,000 people. And it gives you an idea of the size of segments that are actually uh, filtered by timber. What filtered means it's not the 
they're removed, it's just that they're down weighted. And so you'll see that most of them are under eight centimorgans. Here's eight to 10 centimorgans. And so the majority are these very small segments. But notice on this chart that timber also downweights larger segments. And so these are segments that they have determined not to have been, they don't appear to have been inherited from a recent common ancestor. So the key point to take away here is that it's difficult to base conclusions on a single segment of DNA alone. This is all based on statistics. And so we want to be careful and always question any hypotheses we have just based on segments. So a little bit more about how the timber algorithm works. Well, they identify regions of an individual's genome with an unusually high rate of matches. Then timber calculates a timber score and applies it to the segment, that specific region, reducing or downweighting the genetic distance, which we call centimorgans of that segment. After timber is applied, any matches sharing less than eight centimorgans of DNA or less are removed from the match list. And so when we saw a big change a few years ago, when many of our matches were removed, that is because they were uh, updating their algorithm. And so we saw some of our matches drop off and because they were likely not correct matches, that was an okay change. So let's look at an example. Here is my match JB again. And just a reminder, we have the first uh, shared DNA that I see on the screen would be 75 centimorgans across three segments. But opening it up, then I would see the unweighted shared DNA and the longest segment. So JB has a tree, and that tree helped generate through lines. So clicking on the possible relationship, I see that, yes, we both have the same common ancestor, Thomas B. Royston, and here are siblings, first cousins, second cousins. JB would be third cousins with my dad and once removed from me. So that is a very good tree. I have researched this myself. I don't know JB or I don't know this person, but this is reasonable. So I can just go and compare that third cousin once removed and those numbers in the shared centimorgan project. So just for fun, let's put in the unweighted amount of 83 and the weighted and see what the difference is. Does it make a difference with the relationship? Well, that third cousin once removed, here it's 24%, here it's 29%. So it's not a huge difference. Does it really matter whether it's 24 or 29? No, these are statistics, they're probabilities. But we can see it is a little bit different down here. Again, does it make a big difference? Probably not. Now, a fun thing to do is to compare with the new tool over at DNA Painter, which, let, which lets you put in two different amounts. You can add a second amount. So I added both the weighted and the unweighted amounts just to see how that would look. And clicking on the third cousin once removed histogram, I can see that the weighted amount where timber was applied is actually just one standard deviation from the mean, which is right here, the longest. Um, bin here, the largest bin, whereas the unweighted, that total amount was out here a little bit further on the edge. So it looks like Timber made this a more accurate designation for the amount of DNA shared, which is why we are really grateful for Timber and why Ancestry has done a really great job in trying to, to downweight those population segments. So a few takeaways from this. Just as I showed in that example, for relationship estimates, it probably won't make much of an impact. If there is a large difference for pre and post timber, that would be a red flag. Anytime something is not what it seems like it should be, we should look at the relationships again and see if there's something else going on. And then use the unweighted DNA for what are the odds on DNA Painter and the shared centimorgan probabilities because those statistics are based on ancestry DNA pre-timber. So uh, Blaine Bettinger's histograms are not based on that, but the, the probabilities 
from Leah Lark and the DNA Geek are. And so that's just something to keep in mind. But I think you saw again that it really didn't make much of a difference. Those probabilities or those DNA matches under 90 centimorgans just have so many possibilities for relationships that it really doesn't matter. All right. Any questions about what we've talked about? Well, one question I was thinking about is, you know, if we're comparing matches who we share with DNA at Ancestry, and then we're comparing them with matches that we share at MyHeritage, and we have some of both, would it be better to use weighted or unweighted when we're doing that comparison? Well, the other companies do not use timber, and so unweighted would be closer to what they are using. So that would be closer to what they are doing, but other companies have their own algorithms. They use, uh, they can be testing different parts of the genome. And so it, you have to be careful of putting too much credence into comparison across the companies. Great. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks for watching. And I hope this helped you understand a little bit more about timber and what to do with those unweighted or weighted segments.